It's the Poker News Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 855th episode of the Poker News Podcast. I am Chad Holloway at Level 9 Studio in Las Vegas with Mike Holtz and Kinda England. We are back to talk some fun stories. Men, the master win. He's back in the news. He was there during the WSOP. Were you the you for, the, here for oh, that? Oh, yeah. What did he do this time? Yeah, this time it wasn't what he robbed. did. Yeah, it's what somebody did to him. <gasps> he was robbed. No. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. And you know who did it? His nephew. His nephew. Good guess. <laughs> it's crazy. No. <laughs> uh, so wild, dude. Mike ruins all the fun. <laughs> it wasn't me. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so what happened is, so Men the Master, he always comes, he lives in Vietnam. That's where his home base is now. I've been there. I did that whole embedded uh, reporter thing back in 2018. You've been to his house? So I've been to oh. his house. So what happens is, so he's got this house in his hometown, um, and this news story came out from the Viet- uh, Vietnamese news source. Uh, and he's got this house, which is, I don't know how to say, like in Vietnam terms, I'm sure it's a really nice house. But our standards, like it is kind of like, you know, more, it's just janky. Like yeah. a bungalow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's and, like there's some ramps in some spots, like well, where the floor should I mean, be flat. Like the kitchen area is outside, essentially. Like it's covered. This like that's kind of how they do it thing. though. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like it, it is. And it's a, uh, it's a different culture, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it is a really nice place. And I remember getting the tour, uh, but there was one room upstairs that I was not even allowed in. That's because it was men, the masters, you know, private bedroom. Mm. And that's what happened is he came over here for the world series of poker. He locks that room up. It was locked when I was there and he had his sister and I guess her kids or husband house sitting essentially, sure. which makes sense to me. And he returns home from the world series of poker to find that the room has been broken into and that a safe in there has also been broken into. And it says that there was approximately $8,000 in cash along with some valuables, three Rolex watches that were stolen. Uh, he discovered this about, uh, end of August, August 20th, it says here. Um, and the authorities were able to acquire some of the property back, but others was spent. They caught his nephew who admitted wow. to it, said he went and purchased a lockpick uh, kit yeah. to get break in. And uh, yeah, and ended up, you know, getting, getting robbed and getting some of it back. But like, I don't know, like, and I'm sure some people out there are like, Good, you know, the good. We don't like that man, the master. But it sucks, like family, right? Yeah, like, that's sad. Did he go to jail? I, I think he at least got arrested. And you know what? I think knowing men, the master, knowing the Vietnamese culture a little bit, knowing his family a little bit, because I met some of these folks. I don't know if I met his brother-in-law um, at the time, but like family is really important to men. And so, like, I think that's going to be the biggest thing for him, the the betrayal, right? Because in that culture, too, he's like the head of the family. And you, you know, there's a hierarchy, if you will, and you just don't do that sort of thing. And so I think that one's going to hit him pretty hard. Um, But as I I said, I'm sure some people are, you know, feeling like, oh, (laughs) good. You know, he's got that karma. Um, No bracelets, no WSOP bracelets were stolen. At least it wasn't reported. And I actually know that Men is looking to sell his bracelets. He has seven of them. Ooh, um, he sent me some them. pictures that I, I'm sure I'm flashing up on the screen now. Um, I don't know if anybody out there wants to buy Men the Masters. I talked about David Sklansky's 1982 watches. Uh, I just We've talked about it before. We did like a whole episode. Like the value of a bracelet just doesn't seem to be there anymore. Yeah, I just can't see going out and spending money on that. I mean, it's not as cool to have a bracelet. Maybe for some people, maybe some memorabilia and stuff. Like that watch one sounded pretty pretty cool. But. I can't think of a less cool bracelet than Men the Masters. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I could figure it out. I mean, there's seven of them and you can't, there, you, you, there's nowhere else you can go right now and buy a collection of seven bracelets. So there is that going for it. I can only imagine though, the only people who would probably be interested would be like somebody with way too much money to spend yeah. or somebody, you know, a, a rich Vietnamese politician who looks at men in a different light than a lot of other poker people do. Uh, who knows? But I mean, if you're interested, I think they're up for sale. Um, but yeah, interesting story to lead this off. You know, if, if you had a bingo card, men, the master getting robbed in <laughs> Vietnam, I guess maybe it'd be on there. No, <laughs> like, yeah. We no, should no, make a bingo card. <laughs> we should. A Poker News podcast, He's a bingo card of things you would think would never would happen. And then, <laughs> Good. yeah, and then and eventually they do and, and we cross them off. Okay. I'm totally down for that. Well, one of them that might be on there is like, are we dating the same guy? <laughs> like this is apparently a Facebook group thing, which I actually like. We'll get into that, I'm sure. But I saw a tweet. Uh, this is a few weeks back, but Francis Anderson, a WSOP bracelet winner from last summer, I think he took took down the Independence Day uh, tournament. He he tweeted out that he 
he, I don't know if he went on a date, he was going to go on a date, but some woman put him in this Facebook group, are we dating the same guy? Basically asking like, Hey, what do you know about Francis Anderson? And then that opened up a whole topic of not people who knew Fran, uh, Francis Anderson, but basically started <laughs> talking about poker players. Yeah. yeah. And kind of, you said you have some familiarity with this site. A little bit. I mean, <clears throat> so I am in that group. Are we dating the same guy? I don't know why I don't date. So whatever. But I, it's interesting to see the posts. And, you know, every once in a while you see a poker player come up and read the comments and everything. And, I mean, the group is designed for, you know, safety and, like, checking up and, like, are we dating the same guy? Or, like, maybe this guy is not so great, like, and posting, you know, some red flags about a guy. But... I don't like that it's sort of become like, hey, let's just like generalize and say shit about people that we don't know is true. And so I guess that's what happened with Francis. They posted a picture of him with poker chips in a tournament and some ladies were like, don't date poker players. They're scummy. And it's like, OK, well, some of them are for sure. I mean, but just to say that when you don't even know the people, I've seen it happen several times in that group, too. The other day I saw a guy post and. And I didn't know him. He looked familiar. I looked at the post, but I saw a lady just be like, I wouldn't date poker players. They're always too busy and they like to cheat on their spouses and stuff like that. And it's like, why are you saying that kind of stuff? I don't know. It's so unnecessary and it defeats the purpose of the she group. Sh she should play poker. That's a pretty good read. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah, were some on, uh, on Francis's one says uh, poker players are the worst. Yeah. I mean, they're it, not. she's not wrong, but like also it's just not <laughs> specifically about that person. So it bothered me a little bit. Like I didn't see the Francis yeah, post. Yeah, I mean, but. you can't generalize and just fart on all of us. You know what I mean? We're all getting collaterally sprayed on for no reason. <laughs> Anyone who gambles for a living, run. That's another one. Yeah. Well, well actually, it's not gambling. It's, it's, it's a game of skill, actually. Addiction from, is prevalent. <laughs> from experience, one thing about someone who gambles, it's a form of addiction. Lots of ups and downs. Will he put all his bills and priorities or will he risk it all and come home broke? <laughs> I mean, are we saying that like about stockbrokers too? Because that's pretty yeah. risky, you know? Uh, like, uh, you can ask my wife how she likes being married to a poker player while she's flying first class. Like, I'm, she's doing fine. <laughs> like, I think, it, like, I, I give Francis, I don't know him personally. He seems like a nice guy, his mm -hmm. sense of humor or whatever from posting this. Um, oh, yeah, Francis, great guy. Yeah, great I figured guy. you'd probably cross paths Mr. with him here. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, no, that's my dog. I do feel bad, though, like, it would just be a shitty feeling to be like, all right, I'm about to go on a date with this girl, and all of a sudden she messages back and, like, oh, yeah, it's not on anymore. We're not going to do that. And then you find out it's because you got posted in some Facebook group. And the group itself, I think, is great if it's used for the intentions that it's meant to, as yeah. you described. Makes perfect sense to me. But then, like, this, you know, just the generalization of poker players. We already have a hard enough time. And, and uh, yeah, I guess this is what they, they feel about some of us. I don't like it. You know, I went to bat for it. Maybe I'll get kicked out of the group. But uh, I spoke my mind. You know, I said what I said. And I meant it. Well, I hope I'm never on there. Mike, I hope you're never on there. I, I mean, hope I'm not too. Yeah, if I'm so. on there, someone's getting scammed. So, <laughs> well, it's interesting. And uh, yeah, Francis Anderson. Um, you know, keep keep getting out there. Keep swiping right. You're gonna find something yeah. one of these days. Oh, he's slinging dong. He's doing fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My boy slings it. Well, now you're making like an argument for what they said on the group here. No, okay. no, they know it, they know it's good. They saw look in his eyes. That's a that's a that's a, a cute little player right there. You know. Well, I mean, he wasn't short stacked in the the picture they used at least. So. Oh, hey. oh, oh, shit! He's got a big hog. What? <laughs> big chip stack. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Speaking of big yeah. chip stacks, let's talk about Lily Newhouse, the loose cannon from Poker Stars is Big Game. They are the sponsor of this episode. She was a guest host here. Was it with you and me kind of? Yeah, I keep Lily forgetting. was here a couple weeks ago when it first aired. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And we didn't know how it was going to end up, but now all the episodes, all five, are out on the Poker Stars YouTube channel. And spoiler alert, if you're going to, you know, we go back and watch them, maybe tune this part out because we're going to talk about it. Here we go. She won. Yay! Yay! Not only did she win, she won like fifty-eight thousand dollars. Oh yeah, Yay! Straight that's brick. so much money. Which is Fucking great, especially brick. when she was on the show. She had lost this huge hand to Sam Grafton early on, and from her fifty k stake was down to like fourteen thousand. Yeah, like thirteen nine, I think, or something like that. But yeah, and then she worked her way back up. She fought for it. A little uh, switcheroo yeah. on the boys. It was very interesting because she was the official loose cannon. But in the lineup that she had, so it was Lily, it was Sam Grafton, it was Maria Ho, it was actor, comedian, Michael Ian Black, uh, Phil Locke, Locke, the Unabomber, and then you had Furniture Dave, Dave Prosky, <laughs> oh, who yeah. was like a loose cannon 
of his own sorts, not staked in the game, but like, you know, had some money to throw around. You didn't know how he was going to play. And it seemed fitting that the biggest hand for Lily came when she uh, went with Dave. Before we get to that, I want to show just a teaser of what the last episode is like to give you a taste. You're going to see Lily. You're going to see Dave. So you can put some names and faces to, to all this. Check it out. Kind of triple Lily up. What are we doing? Picture walking out of here with a hundred grand right now. I'm ready. It's now or never. I'm ready to get it in, to be honest, you know. Everybody's rooting for the candidate, just not at my expense. <laughs> There's always money to be made at this table. 20, 21, 22, so another 600. I'm playing against a guy who counts on his fingers. This can't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest opportunity of my lifetime, and I'm going to do everything I can to make it count. All in. Wow. <laughs> if I lose, I lose, but um, I'm going to go down fighting. All right, so that is a little teaser. As I said, you can check out all the episodes on the Poker Stars YouTube channel. Now, we don't have video of the hand, but we're going to talk about it. It was the quintessential hand for Lily against Dave, where they ended up getting it all in for like 50K a piece. Against any other player, she's not going to give it in. We watched it before we started recording, and Mike, you were you were all over the place with it. You're like, oh, oh yeah, you got, you got to get it in here against Dave, Furniture Dave. Well, that's what I said off. I would call him a fish off the air, but on the air, I would say, you know, what can you do? Sometimes you just get unlucky, you know? I don't know. I would keep firing and hope for the best. I mean, there certainly— change. Your was, luck will change. Yeah, there certainly was a lot of table talk going on, too, where, I mean, you never just don't think you're good there. Well, he makes, a big, he makes a big error on the flop. I mean, like, Lily, I, you know, I got something here. It's like, oh, if you hit your flush, I'll pay you, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then, what the hand was, was uh, so Lily— so this was hand number 130 out of 150, right? That's how this game is designed is after 150 hands, it's over. If the loose cannon has more than the 50K stake, they get to keep it. And if they lose anything, then they just lose it. So the loose can is it, uh, is incentivized to blast gamble it off, up, blast off yeah. if, if they're not in profit already. And she was sitting with like 57,000 at the time. So she was up ever so slightly when this hand comes. So she straddles. It folds to Furniture <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Mike, there's an earthquake. Mike, uh, his leg <laughs> likes to go nuts under the table. And, yeah. uh, we're, we're taking like notice to go, today. I like to go nuts under the table. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, pause. <laughs> The Krosky, so he's in the small blind, and he just limps with the 9-7 offsuit. Lily checks her option from the straddle with the three of clubs, deuce of clubs. Flop comes 9-6-4 with two clubs. So Krosky, if you've watched this game, he, if he's got a pair, he's going to go big, and he has top pair here. Uh, so he ends up betting 1500 Lily calls it the six of clubs on the turn. So it pairs the board, but Lily makes the flush. Uh, I think she checked it. Or no, she was. So Krosky was first. He bet 5000 into it. Lily bumps it up to twelve five, and Krosky just jams for $52,000. And she snaps it off, too. She doesn't even think about it. She's like, I call. <laughs> I think I think it's the player, too, I right? Mean, like yeah. If it was yeah, yeah, you're Grafton or Maria. Years, yeah. Yeah. And, but then he had been talking about it for, like, episodes leading up to it. Uh, Krosky, Furniture Dave is what they called him. So Furniture Dave wanted so desperately to run it like four times. And he was <laughs> pretty new to the game. If you yeah, watch the game, yeah. you could tell he was, you know, a recreational player. And he said, you want to run it four times here? And Lily first was like, sure. Well, then maybe not. It's not in my best interest, right? Because he could still fill up. There's still two mm -hmm. sixes, two nines left in the deck that he could hit. And Ultimately, she does agree to it, and she actually, Nadia was on the on the rail. Yeah, you could see her be like, ugh. <laughs> then look but, at the I mean, it's a karma thing, and she didn't want to run it. I mean, running it twice would be silly, right? Like, I mean, I would run it once or three times, but four, it's fun. Like, you know, somebody wins, somebody loses, and, you know. I mean, we've seen it in the old days of the big game with, was it— uh, Wiggins, I think is I don't know if it's Andrew Ernest Wiggins or no, no Ernest, 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 Ernest Wiggins, Wiggins. Yeah. Is that what it was? against four times <laughs> yeah. against Helmuth and ended up winning like yeah. three hot out of day, three. Hot damn! <laughs> Get and me dead! Oh shit! I ran it four times. Hold on, let me stand up. <laughs> and everybody's laughing except Phil. Like that was such a great clip. It's I think it resurfaced too, like a few years ago. Like I saw the, it. Yeah, yeah and big clip. Ever, I think. Yeah, I think it yeah. got in the the tw uh, poker Reddit, which uh, is uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. things get brought back to life. Sometimes I was worried that she was gonna you know. It, this was going to cost her. Right. Um, but it didn't. She won all four runouts. She doubled up and then was over 100K. She ended up being the biggest winner in the game, which was quite incredible, winning 58000 
$55,800. That was her profit. That's what she's taken home. Um, Maria Ho, also a big winner, $51,000. Michael Ian Black, he doubled early, so cashed out with $42,000 ahead. Sam Grafton, fifteen k And then the big losers, Dave Krosky, Furniture Dave, $69,000 down, but he was not the biggest loser. That was Phil Locke. Really mm. rough uh, game for him. Ended up losing $93,000. Uh, Maria Ho had doubled up through him earlier on. And uh, yeah, poor Phil. But uh, it was an interesting game. I really enjoyed it. And I don't know, the comeback story for Lily, I, I loved it. Yeah, that was great. Good job, Lily. Yeah, way to go, Lily. I, I'm I'm thinking about it. I think it's better for her to run it more time. Like, I think the more time she runs it, at, two is bad. But, like, four plus, like, if she runs it, like, ten times, I think it's, like, better for her because v- the, the variance is all that you're lowering, right? But the whole thing is, like, if you get less than 50. So if she runs it once and loses, she has a chance to get $0. Right. But if she runs it 10 times, it's like she's not going to get She's going to get some right? profit. I guess it all depends well, on yeah, a lot I mean, of things. There, there's literally only four cards, right? There's four. Mm-hmm. So the most she could ever lose is four, right? So if you're running it 10 times, yeah. she's guaranteed to win six out of the out of the uh, out of those and lose and possibly lose four, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I think it probably doesn't matter at all, and it probably is irrelevant, but I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's better for her to run it a bunch of times. We'll have to Whatever. ask her uh, next time we see her. She did send out a tweet uh, you know, thanking the poker community, saying she's gotten so much love and support, uh, and you know, we were there as well. Like uh, I honestly thought when she was in studio with us and she was down to 14000 really early on, I think it was like even maybe like hand number three or something. Yeah, it was or, pretty early. Yeah, yeah, so I was just like, oh, right no. Away. Yeah, like this is not going to end well for her. And then yeah. – Fast forward to here we are and wins 55K. I think that's awesome. Yeah, Let's go. That's she awesome. says she wants to put a pool in in her backyard. Oh, good. I don't know. If that's she does, fun. she better have a housewarming party too. Yeah, right? No, 100%. Lily, we're invited. We're inviting ourselves. The Poker News Podcast coming to you from <laughs> Lily's pool. <laughs> <laughs> the loose water cannon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, this episode is sponsored by PokerStar. So I do want to talk a little bit about a new integrity rule change that they had. So EPT Barcelona got underway, and they announced that they are going to be doing a couple different things. Number one was they're going to lower their shot clocks from 30 seconds to 15 seconds. Oof. The time extensions are still going to be worth a minute, but they just felt they was getting abused too much, so they're going to lower it, which I actually like quite a bit. Uh, they also said that they're not going to do any more redraws, which I thought was mm. interesting. So what, instead of doing the redraw at the final three and two tables, what they're doing is when it's five tables and onward, random breaking order. Right, so they this it, okay. Where, that's good. Yeah, so you just I think it's don't know thing. in advance if your table's going to break. Exactly. Where if you knew in advance, then you're short stacked and the big blinds coming around, you're going to stall mm-hmm. and stall and stall. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Now it's random. It doesn't matter. You know, there's no incentive to stall. No, I actually okay. like this one a lot. No, random breaking order is so needed because I, like I abuse it when when I know it's going to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the big blind. I always ask hands. which table, which way are we breaking? That's no, like one of the first things I ask on a day two, just to know. You no, know, me too. Yeah, even day ones, like mm. in the when they're bigger fields. Uh, I mean, I'm constantly like, okay, there's 17 tables left. It seems like they're breaking one a minute. That means that, like I'm right. literally, I'm already thinking about this stuff. So yeah, I, I think it's unfair that I get to do something like that. So I I think it's better if they do random breaking order. But. Another change is so right now people will pitch cards. Right when you're dealing, a dealer will, uh-huh. like, will pitch them. It's been kind of popular in Europe, and they're going to make it the standard on EPTs. Is they're going to slide cards? Sliding yeah. is so like I, I'm so happy they're doing that. <laughs> I it's one of my biggest pet peeves. The amount of times I have to I see cards in the yeah, whole, and I, I and hate I, that too. And I call out the card, and then like it'll be the like five of diamonds. I say the four of diamonds, and someone's like, "Oh, you didn't know the exact card." And then some places are different. It's a whole thing. Like forty percent of the dealers. That I see are 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 pitching cards. I like they go. They'll pitch. Some of them will pitch high to certain positions too. Like yep. they'll pitch high to like the nine seat, and it's like I don't want to be the guy that's sitting there like looking for the card. But if I can see it, and it's just such an uncomfortable thing to be like, no, so your pitch is high. Like you need to adjust. You know. Oh, I have man. There's a dealer who is very well respected. I'm not going to say his or her name, but they're very well respected, like top ten dealers. You would probably say, and they the amount of times that they are are pitching cards too high. And I, I've, I said something to them multiple times when we were really deep in an event and they kept doing it. And I watched them on 
another very ho- high profile WSP bracelet, very high profile stream, and they're pitching the cards. I'm looking. I'm like, dude, I th- th- yeah, they're pitching them too hard. If there's still. a possibility like, that somebody could see it, you know, I don't know. It's just it's an uncomfortable thing for a player. So it's a good change. That they're yeah, making. I mean, it's going to take a while to implement. I'm sure because mm-hmm. when you go to dealer school and you learn to deal, you usually a certain way, right? Sure. So if you've never slid cards before. It's going to have to, but have you ever seen like these European t- telecasts and the dealers who are adept at sliding? They're so good. It is oh, just like, like Asian sh- ones. Like yeah, they do it with like oh, one yeah. finger. Like they, they, they must be training them to do that already. Uh, yeah. It's insane. No, it's, it's really wild. Well, Kenny Hallert, who is well known, he was a tournament director mm-hmm. extraordinary, made the November nine one year. Uh, he's a poker stars ambassador right now. He's the one who alerted the poker community to all this via a tweet. And the biggest one out of all this, of the changes was, uh, Remember when we did that episode about laptop gate and having the solvers on the computer, sure. on the rail or what have you? Well, PokerStars decided that they're going to be a industry leader and basically saying, nope, none of that technology is allowed at the table, in the tournament room, nowhere. Like they're going to crack down on this. I think they've seen the writing on the wall from laptop gate and they have the opportunity with the EPT starting. It's their 20th anniversary to be a leader in this space and the other changes as well. And I, I, I applaud them for that. Yeah. yeah. I saw the win. Uh, uh, a lot of my friends were saying at the final tables that they're not allowing any electronics on the. Ra- I, I don't know if it's the rail too, but it, you can't have your. They literally, you cannot pull your phone out at the yeah, final table. Lindsay was at a final table and they said she couldn't be on her phone. She couldn't have earpods and so earpods. Yeah, I think earpods, it's. I think earpods, it's. Earpods, it's earpods. great. Earpods. 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 <laughs> Which one did I say? I don't, who cares? <laughs> who knows? We Earbuds all know or AirPods is what <laughs> I would oh, say. Oh, shit, my Earpods. brain. Uh. <laughs> no, yeah, she was saying that she's because she made the final table and we were like, updates, and she's like, I don't have my phone. So, so poker going in the right direction, basically. <laughs> That's what we're getting at. I think so, and yeah. I think hopefully others will take uh, – take uh, le- or they're leading by example, right? So, And I've noticed this throughout the history of poker and my time in it at least is – you know, somebody like the like Big Blind Annie is a good mm-hmm. example, right? It had to start somewhere. It started at the Poker Go studio, really small. And then because they did it, some other person felt comfortable doing it. I know the MSPT eventually adopted it, right? And then all of a sudden, it becomes the so industry the norm, standard. Yeah. Right. I mean, and did you see the other change the win made? The They're adding like ante to like the big yeah. games. Oh, the cash games. Great. Cash games. No straddles and ante. No straddles. Yeah. yeah. Sounded yeah. like a lot of people liked that. Yeah, I don't even know why I like it, but I do. Mm. I like it. Yeah, it uh, it was interesting. I have an article on Poker News about it. I spoke with Ryan Beauregard, the director of poker operations over there. Like, why? What's the genesis of this? And it boiled down to a lot of, you know, when somebody sits down in a 2-5 game, they want to play in a 2-5 game. But these games were becoming with the straddles much higher. And it was hurting the ecosystem, they Mm -hmm. felt. Uh, so they thought it would be better to to do away with that, institute the Big Blind Annie, uh, and help spur some action and, and what have you. Um, and from what I understand, you know, the win is doing it, but they don't believe they're going to be the last. They think others around town might implement something similar. So another lead by example moment, yeah. the win is great at that. They're the best at it. Yeah, I think, yeah, they're just amazing. The win's so good. Well, one last story I want to talk about in this episode of the Poker News Podcast is a new poker movie that is going to come out on September 13th. It's supposed to be in theaters, but I think more likely you're going to get it on your streaming service, video on demand. It's called Dead Money, and uh, it is a poker movie. uh, Technically, IMDb (laughs) says professional poker player Andy and his girlfriend Chloe are involved in a crazy 24 hours after a home poker game is robbed. Men the master, maybe like they're <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're well, making check their rounds. It. It's his nephew. Yeah, uh, Andy finds uh, up himself up playing the largest poker game of his life as both of their lives are in danger. Uh, this is rated R. It is directed by Luke Walpole, written by Josh Wilcox, and stars Emil Hirsch. Is actually a pretty decent name. Into the Wild and a bunch of other movies. What was he in that was really really good with Justin Timberlake? Oh, the dogs were... Um, alpha Dogs? R- alpha, alpha Dogs, dogs. Yeah. yeah. Alpha Dog. Very amazing movie. That was a good movie. This one, I don't know, man. It don't look too good. <laughs> I mean, it is like it, it, like watching the trailer, I was kind of like, oh, man. Like, I, I've been at, like, home games or, or just, like, not regulated casino games, you know, charity games or something where they got, like, one security guard. And you're like, okay, what if some guy busts in here? You know, like, it just... Yeah. You just think about the safety of the game and the players, and that's what happens in this movie, so... I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, and, and Ooh, here's why. Okay. 
Uh, Emil Hirsch, I do think, is a, a good actor. And yeah. from what he shared on social media, he put some work into studying. He actually went apparently to some of the Hustler Casino Live guys, Ryan Feldman, Nick Vertucci, Nick Airball, and played with some of them to get the feel and stuff. So I like that he put some effort into it in that regard. Uh, and then the supporting cast, I think, is pretty strong. Jack Earl Haley, Rory Culkin, Peter Fascinelli. These are actors that I'm familiar with. Interesting people to go to uh, f- to learning uh, about a movie to scam a poker game. <laughs> I didn't anyway. I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, always right. do wonder though, like how people, like you know, non poker players, how's he's gonna, how's he gonna translate that character? You know, are we gonna see a lot of like mumbo jumbo, like you know, that he doesn't really know what he's oh, talking yeah, right. about? He's like, yeah. he's like, oh yeah, you think just because you're under the gun, that, <laughs> <laughs> you think you can just bluff me with your three bets? Okay, <laughs> like I've seen these before, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna four bet you because I know. <laughs> I know that you're weak. It's your your range, we call it. Yeah. <laughs> Check out the trailer for Are Dead Are you in the movie too? No. Yeah. <laughs> you should be now. The end credit scene, it's just it's just me and him the putting heads up. I'm credits. like, dude, that shit was crazy. He's like, yeah, man. <laughs> shit was crazy. Pass me the ball. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't take it from us. Check out the trailer for yourself. Dead money. Poker is math. The killers at the table. They notice everything else, too. Tells, betting patterns. Jack, 20 more? Yeah, okay. You're sexy when you win big. But all that perfect planning can't account for... Put everything you got on the table! Take whatever you need, not gonna be any trouble. Really at zero? Less than zero. There are down swings, you know? That's part of the deal when you play full time. My bag. You can go back and get it. Jack? When you just waltz right in? I heard them upstairs when I went back. There's always the moment in a game, that electric second where a critical decision puts everything in the balance. The money was just sitting there. Oh, so you just grabbed it? They did not see me. Can you believe that? What happened to the money? We got robbed. I just need one solid session where I actually catch some cards locked in, and I am up and walking. Where is the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? You know what? It's gamble. Trust me. I got this. Jack! We just need to have a little talk. Yeah. It's an instinct. When you see that perfect table, you go for it. Got Jerry away, I'm sorry. I told you the money's not here. That's enough for me. If you believe you will win, then you will. Because if you allow for a shred of doubt, you've already lost. All in. All right, so there's the trailer. The tagline on the poster is, at this table, folding could be fatal. <laughs> Dude, holy shit. It's a thriller. Holy I mean, shit. It's a thriller. I'm going to start holy saying shit. that at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, holy shit. I, no, no, it's, no, they did their research. <laughs> I'm going to watch You're it. You're right, like, Jeff. My bad. <laughs> no, my bad. <laughs> I... I'm going to reserve judgment until I see it. Yeah, yeah, September yeah, yeah, 13th, yeah. video on demand, and maybe select theaters. I do want to ask you, though, like, let's put an over-under on the Rotten Tomato rating. <laughs> is this going to be rated fresh? Is uh, it going to be like low? T- like 18%. Ooh, 18 I was thinking 17 is a good over-under. I'm, like, thinking, God, it's really – it's giving me 13% vibes <laughs> from the critics. I'm going to go – audience score f- – 37. Yeah, 37 okay. sharp. You're I was going to say in the 40s for the audience score, so mm-hmm. we'll have to see. But I think audience score 21. What if this— I'm all, going 13, 21. What mm-hmm. if we're just way off and this is like— Everyone's like, this is better Maybe than Maybe it rounders. wins an Oscar. No, yeah. No, yeah. That'd be, I mean, that'd be cool. I and mean, this is a simulation, so anything could happen. But. I don't know. By the preview, though, I don't have high hopes. I'll still watch it, but I'm glad we didn't know that tagline ahead of time, and that was a genuine reaction, oh, and God, it was great. Yeah. No, that's... <laughs> that was a wow. fun giggle party, for sure. <laughs> They're doing it. They're doing that shit. Folding is fatal. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that is going to do it for this episode of the Poker News Podcast. Uh, do us a favor, like, subscribe, give us that five-star review. Uh, remember, we have a new episode every Friday at 8 a.m. You can subscribe on Apple Podcast, on Spotify, and now on SoundCloud. Uh, I'm Chad Holloway, kind of England, Mike Holtz. Until next time, we'll keep a seat open for you. <laughs>